If we go back and revisit some of the examples that we have looked at in nonlinear oscillators, then I think we'll find some bifurcations that we're hiding inside of there. So let's go back and recall those examples. One such example is given by the Duffing equation. Recall that guy. The second derivative of x with respect to t plus the first derivative of x with respect to t plus delta times x plus x cubed equals zero. This delta is a parameter. When we convert this to a first order system, there was clearly an equilibrium at the origin. The derivative at the origin is given by zero, negative delta, one, negative one. The trace is negative one, the determinant is delta. That means that if we have delta at zero, there is, there's something funny going on. When delta is less than zero, I have a saddle. When delta is bigger than zero, I have a sink. And when delta is bigger than one fourth, I have a spiral sink. So pretty clearly something interesting going on when delta equals zero at the origin. But the origin was not the only equilibrium in this system. We also had an equilibrium that was located at x equals plus or minus square root of negative delta. And where y dx dt equals zero. Now, Go back, take a look at the analysis that we did in that earlier chapter, and what you will find is that based on the derivative evaluated at these two additional equilibria, which only exist when delta is negative, we have sinks. We have either sinks or spiral sinks, depending on what side of negative one eighth delta is located. So what this means, putting it all together, is that at the origin, when delta equals zero, we're going from one equilibrium to three equilibria. This is a pitchfork bifurcation. The question is, is it supercritical or subcritical? Without trying to get the right coordinate change and Taylor expand everything out, just take a look at the stabilities of the equilibria involved. What we have is a lot of stability going on, and in particular, stability getting passed on from the equilibrium at the origin to the two side equilibria that branch out of that pitchfork. That means it's a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation. And that becomes all the clearer when we simulate this system. Look at what is happening when delta is positive, and we have that single equilibrium at the origin, and then as we pass delta through zero into that negative domain, we see a pair of equilibria split off, inheriting the stability of that equilibrium at the origin. Yep, supercritical pitchfork. For another example, let's recall the spinning planar pendulum, where we have this pendulum, it's going back and forth in the plane, and we just take that whole rig and spin it around a vertical axis. That was given by the first order system d theta dt equals v and dv dt equals omega squared sine theta cosine theta minus g over l sine theta. Recall that this had equilibria at 0 comma 0. That's where the pendulum is at the bottom. And then at plus or minus pi comma 0, that's really the same point. That's where the pendulum is at the top. But then we also had another equilibrium at arc cosine of g over l omega squared comma zero. Now the interesting thing is that this only occurs when it's spinning sufficiently quickly. When omega squared is bigger than g over l because of the domain constraints on arc cosine and because of the way that arc cosine works, this is gonna be multi-valued. We have a positive and negative pair of such equilibria. This is really pointing towards a bifurcation at this critical rotation speed, omega equals square root of g over l. Now as to what type of bifurcation this is, well, let's investigate. Let's see what happens in the first case where omega is less than square root of g over l. I just have two equilibria. At the bottom, I have a center. At the top, I have a saddle. And that's it. On the other hand, 
when omega is sufficiently large, when it's bigger than root g over l, then that center at the bottom becomes a saddle. I still have the saddle at the top, but now I have an additional pair of equilibria centers off to the left or the right. They branch out of that equilibrium at the bottom. Now this is a little bit unusual in that this is an integrable system, so that these are true centers emerging from this saddle. Nevertheless, this is still following the pattern of having a single equilibrium change its type while emitting a pair of similar equilibria off to the side. Because of the stabilities involved here, this is going to be a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation, as can easily be seen when you simulate this system. When you look at sufficiently low angular velocities, there's just that one center at the origin, but then as you, as you speed it up, it hits this critical angular velocity where this bifurcation happens, and we get a pair of centers emerge off to the side. That's a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation.